Hello friends, so let us uh, resume our discussion on considering work and energy in a single framework. So if you could recollect in the previous lecture, we began considering a system or we began treating a system where we would be able to express both work and energy in a single framework or in a single description. Now before doing that, let us have a quick recap of what we have been considering so far because some of the concepts that we have considered so far would be highly relevant to us not only for this lecture and also for the lectures that are yet to come so this is, uh, for that reason alone we will consider some of the key points that we have uh, looked into in the previous lectures so we saw that uh, as opposed to uh, Newtonian mechanics or the Newton's laws of motion thermodynamics gives us a framework to treat explicitly both work and energy in a single framework even though in Newton's laws of motion we have all the variables that are necessary to define energy to define work these are not the energy at work these are not considered in a single setup in Newton's laws of motion so therefore what we, thermodynamics gives us is gives us a platform wherein we can consistently relate the work and energy now secondly the way to the way we discuss or describe a system in the framework of thermodynamics is we describe its state so in case of uh, Newton's laws of motion we consider an object and we consider how this object uh, what is the condition of this associated with this object similarly in the framework of thermodynamics we consider a system and we describe or associate a state to this system now we saw that there are two different ways of describing the state of the system so one way is bottom up approach we begin with the microscopic state of the system and from that we ultimately calculate or estimate the overall state of the system so this is the bottom up approach we start with the particles that constitute a system and we consider its microscopic state and then we build up to the overall state of the system now this is quite difficult because there are numerous particles involved in a given system typically and uh, each of these particles they are associated with their own variables so therefore uh, the number of considerations that we need to make the number of parameters that we need to consider significantly increases and therefore we take a different approach which is the top down approach meaning what we do is we treat the entire system in a macroscopic scale as opposed to microscopic state we consider the entire system as we perceive it in the macroscopic scale and we describe the state of the system using in the macroscopic scale using specific variables and these variables are referred to as the thermodynamic variables again the reason we are able to use these thermodynamic variables to describe the state of the system is because by fixing certain thermodynamic variables we are not only fixing the rest of the variables but also the state of the system so given that we are able to describe or fix a state of the system through a few variables we can describe the st state of the system using these variables and these are referred to as the thermodynamic variables so these few variables that govern the rest of the variables and also the state of the system we refer to them as the independent variables and the rest of the variables are referred to as the dependent variables so when you have a category of variables a set of variables that actually is used to describe the state of the system you have dependent and independent variables so when you fix the independent variables the dependent variables are also fixed and ultimately you are fixing the entire state of the system now when you want when you have an expression that relates the dependent and the independent variable in the theoretical framework it is possible for us to choose the dependent and independent variable depending on the physical setup we have so this we saw in the previous lecture as well supposing you are considering a physical setup wherein it is easy for you to measure the volume instead of pressure then in that case we can consider temperature and volume as the independent variable measure them and the pressure can be ultimately calculated from this from the relation that the theory presents us with so even though theoretically volume is the dependent variable when you relate the theoretical setting to the physical framework since we have an explicit relation that relates these different variables we are in a position to choose these dependent and independent variables so it is not set at least when you compare or when you want to relate the theoretical setup to a physical condition whenever you are considering exclusively in a dealing in exclusively in a theoretical framework then 
it might be that these certain variables are fixed as independent variables and certain are fixed as dependent variable now in addition to this categorization we saw that it is also possible for us as of now to categorize the variables thermodynamic variables into state variables and non state not a state variable so we will in this lecture see what this not state variable is but as of now we know that certain variables can be categorized as state variables and others as a not a state variables now the state variables they help us describe the state of the system so one way of looking at the state variable is that it helps us to describe the state of the system and when you want to describe the state of the system in its present condition you don't have to have any information about its past or its future so that is one of the characteristic features of the state variable so you don't have don't need any information about the past where the system came from or where the system is approaching so when you have a system in a stable state and we use certain variable variables to describe the state of the system we refer to them as the state variable however when you want to describe a variable for a system in its present condition but you need to have an information about its past or its future then that variable is not a state variable now in addition to that we saw in the previous lecture that um when you when your system is exclusively described by these state variables it is possible for us to introduce when um any number of intermediate steps when you when your system moves from one step to another step so when you have a system that moves from an initial stage to a final state initial state to a final state and this system is exclusively described by the state variables alone then again exclusively alone both mean both mean the same i just to emphasize that the system needs to be described exclusively based on the state variables now in that case it is possible for us to include any number of intermediate steps without distorting the initial and final state or without distorting the change in the system when it moves from initial to final state so there is one um, aspect or one of the beneficial aspect when your system is exclusively um described by the state variables now we saw in the previous lecture that this beneficial aspects allows us to simplify the way we express the change in the state of the system so we saw in the previous lecture that our system of volume 1 changes to a system of another volume so in order to, for this change to happen both temperature and pressure to change simultaneously now when you want to have a single numerical framework wherein two variables are changing simultaneously it becomes quite, quite complicated now since it is possible for us or since this system is exclusively described by the state variable it is possible for us to include intermediate steps so that is what we saw uh, lastly in the previous lecture so when your system that is described by these variables moves to another initial state to a final state and both pressure and temperature are changing simultaneously it is possible for us to to introduce an intermediate step where one of these two variables are held constant so that is what we saw in the previous lecture so the intermediate step va here the temperature during the first step the temperature is held constant while the pressure reaches its final value so the temperature is held constant and in the second step since the pressure has already reached the final value we need to hold the pressure to be constant and change the temperature so here the pressure is rather constant now this is all what we saw in the previous lecture now in this today's lecture or uh, as a continuation of the previous one we want to have a setup wherein we are able to talk about energy and work in the singular framework for that we began by considering a system which we refer to as the adiabatic system so the adiabatic system the characteristic feature of the adiabatic system is that it will not allow the heat to pass through it so whatever temperature or whatever uh, change or whatever heat is generated it is sustained or it is confined to the system and there is no heat transfer out of the system to the surrounding it is not possible so such is the characteristic feature of the adiabatic system now what essentially we have is we have a system that comprises of uh, say a fluid and uh, now the system if any heat is generated it is not allowed to pass through its boundaries now what is we are doing we are imposing or we are introducing we are doing some work on the system because of this work there is a generation of heat 
and this generation of heat ultimately leads to the rise in temperature and we are able to measure not the generation of heat but the rise in temperature. So what we are essentially doing is we are introducing a work on the system, we are doing a work on the system and this work it generates heat and this heat is uh, it ultimately translates to rise in the temperature of your fluid. Now what we are doing is or what we are imposing is work and what ultimately changes is what uh, the factor that is changing is or the observable factor observable factor that is changing is the temperature. So you are introducing work and the temperature rises. Now what we mean by rise in the temperature is we are seeing that here there is the temperature that is used as one of the factor that has helped us to describe the state of the system. So when we say we do a work and the temperature is changing, what essentially is happening is that because of this work, the state of the system is changing from one state to another. So in our previous simplistic case, we saw temperature is used as one of the thermodynamic variable to describe the state of the system. So temperature is established to be a thermodynamic variable. Now we do our work and the temperature of the system it changes. Let it be. Let us, uh, let us assume that it increases. So what essentially is happening is by doing the work you are changing the state of the system and we need to explain how this system or the state of the system changes, how this temperature rises. So again there are two ways for us to do this, to explain or to relate or to describe how the state of the system changes when you do a work on it. So one of the way again is bottom up considering the microscopic state of the system. You can consider the microscopic state of the system, energy of the individual particles and then ultimately talk about the rise in the temperature through this microscopic state of the system. But that is not what we usually do in the thermodynamic framework because again that is uh, that would involve a significant amount of that would need a significant amount of information. However, alternatively what we do in the thermodynamic framework is we consider a macroscopic variable like pressure, temperature and volume. So these pressure, temperature and volume, these are not associated with a specific particle but the system as a whole. So these are some typical examples of the thermodynamic variables, pressure, temperature and volume. So we need to have a similar variable that would consider the system as a whole, not the individual entities and that would help us understand how by introducing a work or by doing a work, the state of the system changes. And this variable, this macroscopic thermodynamic variable that helps us, that helps us understand how when a work is done, the state of the system changes is the internal energy. So the context wherein we are introducing the internal energy in the framework of thermodynamics is we are trying to relate how the work done introduces a change in the state of the system. The work done, how it introduces a change in the uh, how introduces an energy, work done introduces a form of an energy and this energy gen translates into the rise in temperature. Ultimately, it is observable for us that a change in the state has occurred. So in this framework, we are introducing this or in this context, we are introducing this term internal energy because internal energy now is going to help us understand or quantify how the system has changed from one state to another. Now, energy we saw in the previous lecture as a typical or as a canonical definition of its own. So energy is the ability to work, do work. Now the internal energy means we are talking of a system, we are talking about a macroscopic system. So if you want to have a canonical descri uh, description like we have one for the energy, then the internal energy can be referred to as the ability of the system to do work or system's ability to do work is referred to as the internal energy. So what we are essentially doing is the difference between energy and internal energy is we are relating or we are restricting the energy to not the individual particle or we are associating the energy to the entire system. So when we say ability to do work is energy, the system's ability to do work, ability to do work uh, by or on a system, or the ability to do uh, work of a system or when a system is able to do work that is what we refer to as the internal energy. So energy of the system to do or the ability of the system to do work is what we refer to as the internal energy. Now when we describe this internal energy or when we introduce this uh, typical uh, parameter to describe the change in the state of the system when a work is done or not, the ultimate the work can be then 
equated to this change in the system. So essentially what is happening is you are doing some work that is a change in the state of the system. So whatever your work you are doing it is used to change the state of the system from 1 to 2. So you have a state of the system say here 1 and you are introducing a work or you are doing your work now the state of the system has changed to 2. So essentially what is happening is that whatever work you are doing the state has been used by the system to change its states from 1 to 2. So how do we know that this work has been used to change its state? Because we observe that the temperature rises. Now this is what we are trying to explain how this temperature change in the temperature can be quantified or can be expressed using a thermodynamic variable. So whatever work we have done has been employed or has been used by the system to change its state. And in order to express this change in state, we are introducing this internal energy. The internal energy is nothing but the ability of the system to do a work. Now, what it means is that whenever you are doing a work, there is a change in the internal energy. So we are using internal energy to describe the change in the state of the system. So the whatever work you have done is being employed to change in the internal energy of the system. So whatever work we are doing is used by the system to change its internal energy. That change in the internal energy is what ultimately causes the rise in the temperature. So one way of expressing, the microscopic way of expressing is you can talk about the work done. This work done increases the kinetic energies of the individual entities or atoms and thereby increasing the temperature or the other way of talking about it or other way of describing it is you have introduced a new thermodynamic variable the work done changes the internal energy of the system so initially, initially the internal energy was u1 so the notation that is used to describe the internal energy is u so initially the internal energy was u1 and now the work is being introduced and the internal energy changes to u2 rather and because of this change there is an increase in temperature so this is one way or this is a thermodynamically consistent way without involving the microscopic uh, state uh, a way of describing the change in the system that is introduced by the work. Now when we talk about work, so we saw there is a, a canonical description or the way of describing work or how work is generally described. So work is often expressed as work uh, which again assumes an uh, notation of W is expressed as the product of force into displacement. So force and displacement is usually what um, is employed to describe work. Now we also saw in a simple example that we considered the force and the displacement which comes comprises a force that is uh, as, as an unit of Newton and the displacement that has the unit of meter can be expressed as also a product of the pressure and volume. So we saw that when we are equating just the dimensions of work and energy. So in our, pre in our previous lecture, we consider uh, uh, considered a simple example wherein we wanted to relate the dimensions of work and energy. And there we saw that dimensions of the work is equivalent to the product of pressure and volume. So when you consider the uh, dimensions of the product of pressure, pressure and volume, which can be related to the energy, in the example, in the rather subjective example that we saw is equivalent to the dimensions of pressure. So this work that is forced into displacement which is again this description is associated largely with uh, the Newton Newtonian mechanics. Now in the context of the thermodynamics this work can be expressed as change in the volume when an external pressure is being applied. So you have a canonical description of energy which we saw as the ability to do work. In case of the thermodynamic framework this description changes because we, because we are focusing on the system so we have a description for internal energy that is referred to as the ability of the system to do work. Now similarly we need to have uh, a corresponding or a respective uh, definition of work in the framework of thermodynamics. The canonical description of the work is the product of force into displacement. You impose a force and there is a movement of an object and the product of the force and the displacement is what we refer to as the work in the framework of Newton's laws of motion. Now we are dealing with the thermodynamic framework. We don't have displacement, we don't have force, but rather we have pressure and uh, we have pressure as one of the uh, thermodynamic variables and volume as one of the, uh, the other thermodynamic variables. Now one way of describing work, so this is not the only way, but one way of describing work is you impose a force, uh, impose a pressure rather, rather and there is a change in the volume and this product of the uh, pressure and the change in the volume is one way of describing the work done on a system or work done by a system. 
So the reason we are considering this uh, is because there are certain conventions associated with work when you want to consider it in the thermodynamic framework. So what we have is in the previous uh, example, we saw that we are doing a work on the system. So we are introducing a work on the system or we are doing a work on the system. It is also possible for the system to do work. So in, in the previous example, we introduce a work on the system. We are doing a work on the system. It is also the second case is that this is case one. It can, can, we can consider it to be a case one. And it is also possible for the system to do some work or it is also possible to have a setup wherein the work is done by the system. So depending on what consideration or what is the conditions that we have before us, the convention that we used for work, that we use for work changes. So now that we are talking about a work that is work or that is done by or on a system, we need to understand this convention. So in the previous example, we began our consideration of the work. We, be, we began talking about work. And now that we are uh, beginning to introduce work, we are beginning to talk about it, uh, its uh, importance and how it translates into energy. It is quite important for us to understand the convention that is used to describe work in the thermodynamic framework. Now, we saw that it is possible for us, the surrounding, to do a work on the system and it is possible for the work to do or rather the system to do a work. Now, let us consider again to understand this convention, let us consider again a simple setup, a closed setup and we are allowed to do some work on the system. Now, when we do a work on the system, what essentially happens is that the volume of the system decreases. So generally, when we do impose a pressure on a system, so what, is, what we are doing is we are doing work on the system. This, this is case one. So when we are doing a work on the system, we are introducing a pressure. So ultimately what happens is in the response to this pressure, the volume of the system decreases. So if the initial volume is V1 and because of this pressure, the system has uh, reduced its volume and as it reached a rather smaller volume of V2. So the change in the volume, that is for the simplistic case, the change in the volume dV will be final the, uh, the difference between the final volume and the initial volume so dv will be the difference between final volume and the initial volume so we are considering a simplistic case wherein the work is done on the system we as the surrounding are doing a work on the system and therefore in response to this work the volume of the system is reducing now we want to consider the change in the volume of the system and if you consider the change in the volume of the system it is nothing but since uh, we have already established that volume as a state variable, so change in the volume of the system is the final volume versus initial volume. And since here the final volume is less than the initial volume, we change in the volume of the system when we have work done on the system, the change in the volume is less than negative. Or sorry, it's less than one, meaning it's uh, or it's less than zero. Pardon me, meaning it's negative. So when you do a work on the system, the volume changes and uh, the difference in the final volume and the initial volume is negative because the final volume is smaller than the initial volume. And the pressure, again, it's a constant. We are applying a constant pressure, assuming that we are applying, it's a simple system, we are uh, applying a constant pressure. So that means whenever we do a work on the system, since this term here is less than zero or negative, the work done is also negative. So whenever a work is done on the system, there is a decrease in the volume. Again, for a simplistic case, this is for your understanding. Whenever a work is done on the system, there is a decrease in the volume. And this decrease in the volume means that the dV term that helps us describe the work done is negative and pressure is always constant. So we assume the pressure to be constant in this condition. And therefore, the overall work is in the is negative when we do a work on the system. Now let us consider the other case of case 2 where the work is done by the system. Now you have a system or let the system be in black. So we have a system in its initial state. Now the work is done by the system. So that means as opposed to work done by the surrounding on the system wherein the volume of the system shrinks 
in case of work being done by the system what essentially happens is that volume of this system increases so work done by the system is the opposite of work done on the system so essentially when you have work being done on the system the volume is decreasing now when you have work done by the system the volume is increasing so by and on are two contradicting uh, conditions when you do a work on the system you are imposing a pressure and reducing its volume when the, work, when the system does the work it is expanding and it is increasing the volume now and now under this condition of case 2 when we calculate the change in the volume that is dv it is again equal it is again the difference between the final volume and the initial volume and since the final volume is greater than initial volume when the work is done by the system ultimately what it would mean is that the change in the volume is positive so the change in the volume unlike the work done on the system is positive so the red here denotes work done on the system and the blue here denotes work done by the system so when you do a work there is a decrease in volume so ultimately this means the difference in the volume is negative the final volume is less than the initial volume when the work is done by the system then what we have is the final volume is greater than that of the initial volume so that means the change in the volume is positive so the work done when the work is done by the system then the work the value of the work or the, wo uh, the work assumes a positive value. So unlike work done on the system, work done by the system assumes a positive value. So this is one of the convention that you need to remember. So this convention largely stems from our uh, the example that we have considered the simple example of uh, wherein you can do you are imposing the work in the form of pro, um, in the form of pressure and the change in volume and if you want, if you consider the convention based on this example it will be easy for you to understand there is a con confusing as aspect associated with it because when the work is done by the system usually the system expends its energy so system uses its energy so it is possible for us to logically or rather reasonably uh, reasonably conceive that the work done by the system can be negative however the reason why we have this particular uh, we consider uh, we invested certain amount of time to discuss this example is because that is not the case we are not talking about the translation of energy but just work alone particularly by in in accordance with this definition here so therefore whenever you see or whenever um, the question or whenever the condition is on the work, uh, work being done by the system even though the, uh, the uh, system expenses energy to do this work since we have this rather canonical description of the work and since when the work is done by the system it means the expansion of the volume that means when you when the work is done by the system the value is positive so this is convention this is a, a critical convention that you need to remember even though work done on a system would increase its energy uh, and that might uh, uh, that might uh, have, you mean you can uh, reasonably conclude or say that because of this energy uh, maybe it could be positive maybe you can make that argument but we are not talking work in terms of energy or we are not making a consideration of work in terms of energy but based on this canonical expression or based on this uh, description here and therefore the entire convention of work positive or negative depends on this expression here the expression which dictates or which describes the work as the product of pressure and change in volume so the entire convention of work is dependent on this particular expression or this particular expression will help you understand or would help you uh, decide the convention of the work so just to uh, reiterate what has been said so far when you have a system or when you have a, uh, a setup where the work is done on the system the volume decreases when the volume decreases the change in the volume is negative because the final volume is less than the initial volume so in that case since the volume decreases when you do a work on the system the overall work will be negative on the other hand when the system does the work the volume increases meaning the final volume is greater than the initial volume the difference in the volume will be positive and ultimately the work done by the system is positive now what we have now established that the work done 
on the system is positive and the work done or rather work done on the system or the work done on the system is negative and work done by the system is positive now let us go back so we have established the con this convention work done on the system is negative and work done by the system is positive now with this convention in, in our mind with this understanding of the convention let us go back to our example of doing a work and expressing this work or the change in state introduced by the work using internal energy so that is what we have been considering so far so we have been considering an adiabatic system and a work is done on the system and there is a change in state that is exhibited by the system and now we are attempting to describe the change in state in terms of internal energy so we have a change in state from 1 to 2 and we are now trying to describe this change in state in terms of internal energy so meaning internal energy u1 has changed to internal energy u2 now in order to bring about this change what we essentially have done is we have introduced a work we have done a work on the system so we have done a work on the system so it means it has it assumes a negative value here the value of the work will be negative and the final state is u2 the internal energy the final state of, or the final state of the system is described based on its internal energy so it is u2 and the initial state is u1 so now when you do a work on the system it means you are increasing the energy of the system so u2 will be greater than u1 so ultimately what is happening is this difference here will be positive and since there is a negative before it the work will have a negative value so we have considered a setup where a work is done on the system and because of this work there is a change in the state of the system and in order to describe the change in the state of the system we are introducing the term internal energy we define the internal energy as the ability of the system to do work this change in the internal energy we refer to initial state as u1 and the um, final state as u2 we described the work done based on this in, in, internal uh, internal change in the internal energy as in this way we have included a negative sign here so the expression that relates work and change in the internal energy is of this form here and we have most critically a negative sign in front of it now what this negative sign allows us to do is it allows us to dis, uh, use the convention that we have understood the or uh, that is largely used to describe work this negative sign is important to introduce the convention that is associated with work now you have um, a change in the internal energy of the system because of the work that is done on the system so you have a work that is done on the system you are doing a work on the system so because of this work there is an increase in internal energy so this increase in internal energy means you are satisfying this factor that is u2 is greater than u1 and when you substitute or when you consider the difference between u2 and u1 this means this particular term here this difference here is positive but for this sign here if you ignore the sign here and assume the work uh, to be positive according to the convention it would mean that the work is done by the system however it is not the case here so therefore this negative sign brings us back to this original or it helps us understand the context of our system that is the work is done on the system even though there is a increase in internal energy of the system so the way we would um, relate work and the internal energy is through this expression and it is not just the difference in the internal energy of the system the work then ultimately translates to the change in the internal energy of the system so it is just not that we consider the uh, difference in the internal energy but we need to have a negative sign before it because of the conventions that is associated with the work so even though we do a work and that increases the internal energy of the system it does not mean that the overall uh, it does not mean that we have done a positive work because according to the convention when you do a work on the system it is negative and therefore we introduce a convention in front of it this convention which is vitally important it helps us be uh, helps us to be consistent with the convention of the work this negative sign 
that is used to relate the internal energy and the work it helps us to be consistent with the conventions of the work finally just to recap what all that we have considered the work when a system does a work the then the work assumes a positive value when we do a work on the system it assumes a negative value so in our example here even though we do a work on the system and as a consequence of it the internal energy of the system rises so therefore just when you consider the difference between the internal energy even though it renders us a positive value we have a negative sign before the expression that gets us back to the convention now before proceeding further before trying to introduce the aspect of uh, how this internal energy brings about the change in the temperature and all those things let us uh, spend some time on understanding another aspect of the work so here the canonical description of the work we saw it to be p dot dv that is dv is nothing but the change in the volume of the system now when you have a, such a setup when you have such a consideration what it essentially means is that um, in order to calculate the overall or the total amount of work done or the entire work done when you have several steps when you have several intermediate steps it is not just a direct um, step from a state or it's not a direct um, change from a given state to a final state but there is a several uh, different intermediate steps that are involved between of initial state and the final state between the initial volume and the final volume then in order to calculate the work done what you need to do is you need to integrate this overall you need to integrate this expression or this term on the right hand side so let me repeat in the previous simple example we saw the equator dv2 v2 minus v1 that is the volume at the final state to that of the volume at the initial state because we assumed that the volume of the system changed directly from one state to another because of the assumption the dv term that is involved in the description of the work was translated to be the difference between v2 and v1 supposing instead of a direct path instead of a direct change from volume hot one to volume two if the uh, if there are several intermediate steps involved supposing let us consider an example here so you have your volume one and or other you have your pressure and you have your volume and beginning with here so let us assume the pressure to be constant there is one way the, the way to reach a state here so this let this be v1 and let the other state be v2 and the pressure is constant so in the initial case in the uh, when, when we consider or the simplest example we consider we consider that the system just moves from v1 to v2 so ultimately it takes a, a simplest path like this or something like this now supposing instead of taking this path here if the system moves from v1 to v2 in this manner if instead of uh, going through the easiest path we instead of going through the simplest path if the system moves from v1 to v2 what essentially would happen is this integration here would change the meaning or the whole value of the work that is involved so initially pdv was in our previous assumption the pdv was the difference between v2 and v1 the final state that is v2 and v1 now if you consider the meaning of this integration in this framework then this here this integration gives or this quantifies the overall area within this curve so essentially what happens is in case of we can he, so we have two paths here or rather two ways of reaching v1 to v2 one is rather a direct path so let me uh, redraw it again so one is rather a direct path you have your pressure that is constant and volume so one is rather a direct path the other is rather a convoluted path it takes a detour and reaches the the final volume so we have our initial volume and the final volume now when you consider this expression of the work done that is the integral that involves the integral sign before the change in the volume then for the simplest case of v1 to v2 the work done is calculated by considering the area under this curve so this expression means we are calculating the area under this curve so we are considering from v1 to v2 and just the area under this curve now when we take the path to the red path 
then the expression it remains the same the meaning of the expression it remains the same now we are essentially considering the area under the red curve so what it means is that depending on the path that we take to move from volume 1 to volume 2 the work done it changes when you have a simplest straight path from v1 to v2 then the work done is calculated by considering the rectangular area under this straight line however when the path that we take from when we want to move from v1 to v2 is in the form of a curve it is not a straight line it takes a detour and comes back to v1 in that case what we essentially have is we have the area under the curve which is greater than the area under the straight line so therefore even though the initial and the final point are the same, the work done in case of the red curve is greater than the work done or the work that is quantified in case of the black curve. So unlike volume, where when you just consider the volume, when you can just consider the change in the volume, it is just V2 minus V1 irrespective of the red path or the black path. In case of work, what we observe is the path really matters. The path we take to reach volume 1 to volume 2. So here volume, well, the reason we are introducing volume or talking about volume is because we are treating the state of the system in terms of volume. For this example, we are treating the state of the system in terms of volume. Now, when you move or when the state of the system changes from one state to another, that is volume 1 to volume 2, the change in the volume can be easily calculated as just the difference in the volume. However, when you consider the this particular description of the work, where an integration is involved and the variable or the change in the uh, state is quantified or the smaller change and the incremental change in the state is quantified that is the incremental change in the volume is quantified so in that case what we observe is the path that is taken to change once the, the state of the system it defines or it distinguishes the work done on the system when the path that is taken to change the state of the system is straightforward that is that is straight from v1 to v2 then the work done which is the area under the path is rather in the form of a rectangle however when we take a detour when we don't follow a straight path what essentially happens is that the work the area under this particular path it increases the area under the curve which is now i mean the path which is now a curve it increases thereby exhibiting that the value of the work is dependent on the path that you take unlike volume which the difference of which can be just quantified by considering the initial state and the final state uh, in case of work the work done or the amount of work done when you compare the initial state or the final state or the amount of work done in order to change the state of the system from initial state to the final state is dependent on the path that is taken if the path that is taken is straight the v1 to v2 is right uh, is uh, it is reached in a straight away manner then the work done is the area under this particular rectangle in this case however if it takes a rather a convoluted path or a lengthy path then the area under curve under the curve is represented by w2 or the uh, red area and this is greater than that of the the path that was rather straightforward so what this means is that unlike volume work the amount of work done it depends on the path so unlike temperature or unlike pressure which are uh, the difference of which can be directly calculated from the initial state and the final state in order to calculate the work you need to know the path the system has taken in order to exactly quantify the work amount of work that is involved we need to know the path that has been taken so that means work is not a state variable it is a path variable so here the path we mean by how the system has reached from one state to another and since the amount of work that is required to change the state of the system from one to another depends on the path it takes we refer to work as a path variable now we saw there are two ways of looking into the state variable one is the state variable helps us describe the state of the system irrespective of its history now the only place where we need the history of the system when we are talking about the state variable is when we are considering the change in the state variable so when we when we are considering delta t or delta v or delta 
Okay. Only in that case, we need to know the history and the current state of the variables. Apart from that, if you want to just identify or calculate the volume, pressure or temperature, we can just consider the state of the system and we can measure it. And just considering the state of the system, you can describe it without any thought about the history or the future of the system. However, when you want to talk about the work done on the system or work done by the system, you need to have an information about what is the starting point, what is the final point and how the starting and final point have been reached. So this is a primary distinction between the state and the path variable. So state variable, you, don't, you, don't, you need not have any information about the history or the future. You just need to have, know the state of the system and you will be able to calculate the state variable. On the other hand, in path variable, you need to describe, how to describe the work done by the system or work done on the system. You need to know the initial state, final state and the path it has taken. And as the name in itself signifies, the path variable, the, one of the other characteristic feature of the path variable is that the path variable, the amount of a path variable that is involved during a change of a system or the change of the state of a system, it depends on the path the variable takes. So when you have a straightforward as shown in this example, when you have a straightforward change in volume 1 to volume 2, then the amount of work that is done is much less than when you have a, when you take the red path wherein you take a detour and reach volume 2. So with this, I would like to wind this lecture up and uh, we will consider or we will build on this and try to understand what changes would happen when we include another, uh, another term in the expression that we have here. So let's see ourselves in the next lecture. Goodbye.